Welcome to the driver's line. I'm Greg. And I'm Jordan. And today, we've got a conversation for you. Today's conversation is going to feature what we believe to be the Mount Rushmore of cars. That's right. We've each come up with our own Mount Rushmore. So you think of Mount Rushmore? It's got four heads on it, representing four of the greatest presidents. Not necessarily the best presidents, but each president has been responsible for some sort of monumental change or shift or improvement to the United States. Exactly. So the vehicles that we pick, we felt represent impact, uh, vehicles that make a big impact on the automotive landscape. Right? That's right. So I'll start things off with my first pick. Uh, and that is actually not one that uh, we've talked about often, just in our previous podcast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the Tesla Model S. Oh, uh, yeah. So Also on my Mount Rushmore. Oh, also on your yes, Mount Rushmore. Look was, at that. Yes. Here we go again. <laughs> So, uh, more angry letters coming in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I just think that when that vehicle debuted, you know, electric cars were in such infancy. I mean, you had the Nissan Leaf, right, uh, as basically the most popular electric vehicle, uh, pure electric, um, at the time. And, you know, the, the Tesla showed that we could take that technology and make it attractive, make it performance oriented, give people range. Yeah, it's a little bit more pricey, for sure. But as with all things in technology, right, cost com comes down, mm -hmm. and that allowed Tesla to begin manufacturing vehicles that were more affordable and could bring more people in the fray. And now you have what's arguably the most successful luxury automaker right, right now yeah. on the market. Absolutely. And, you know, it, Tesla, most importantly, was the first one that made an EV cool. Mm -hmm. It made it desirable. Yep. It made it something that people actually were like, hey... I really want to go out and get that. It wasn't just like, uh, oh, I'm going to save the environment type person, which there's still some of those, right? But it actually made it cool and unique. And, you know, it's been just such a great platform for all their latest technology kind of along the way, too. That's been the first that got autopilot. It was the first that got full self-driving. It was the first that got plaid. So, like, every emerging technology Tesla comes up with, aside from the rocket boosters, <laughs> is going to be in the S, which is just really, really cool. And I, I, I think it deserves a spot on there, you know, Regardless of what you think about a CEO, yeah. um, you know, Tesla really has made EVs something to be, you know, just desired. desired. Right. Yeah. By a lot of people. And I mean, it, it's, it's really forced the hands of the legacy automakers because, you know, I'm sure they'd be very happy just selling you a gas guzzling SUV exactly. for decades, yeah, right? They've got that, um, they've got that, uh, <laughs> they've got that recipe down path. For sure. Yeah. But I, I think it's just really cool to see uh, an American manufacturer leapfrogging the competition mm -hmm. by leaps and bounds, which yep. Tesla certainly has done. So yeah, absolutely. Good yeah. choice. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go on to my first choice. All right. This is the vehicle that got the United States on the road. So we are going okay. all the way back <laughs> to the Ford way Model back. T. Yeah. <laughs> Great choice. Yeah. I mean, it, it is the one that was the first vehicle that most people in the United States ever owned. Like going back to the people when they got their first vehicle, when they got rid of that horse and buggy, the Model T was invariably one of the first. I mean, they sold 15 million of them. Incredible. 15 million. And it obviously revolutionized manufacturing too, which was the other cool thing about the Model T. Um, so not even just to the automotive realm, but also to like the manufacturing realm. How long do you think it took to manufacture the first Model T as far as chassis goes? I have no idea. <laughs> 12 hours. Wow. <laughs> do you know how long by the time they were done? How long? 90 minutes. That's incredible. <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, it's, just, yeah. it's really, really cool. I mean, there's a lot of just interesting facts about the Model T and kind of what it did for um, both the United States and for, obviously, the automotive world. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not the first vehicle, but it's definitely one of the most impactful. I, th yep. I think you're absolutely right with that choice. Um, I mean, it... it revolutionize the 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 family life right in the united states um <laughs> and, part, and globally eventually as part of that family life one of the other things i read when i was looking at this <laughs> if you worked at ford once you could afford one you had to buy one <laughs> <laughs> not authoritarian uh, no, not at authoritarian all. at all ford but you know you know i think it was just you know like product promotion i mean tesla kind of does the same thing right. now right like they encourage a lot of their employees to buy Teslas. Right. And they want them to, right? So, I mean, it's just kind of just promoting the product that you build. I totally understand that. Yeah. But. Well, we're, we're going to stick in the Ford brand for our next choice. All right. Uh, my next pick uh, for Mount Rushmore uh, is the Ford Mustang. Did you pick that one? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> 
I had a feeling the Mustang guy was going to pick a Mustang, but I had to pick it because it's such a really awesome vehicle that just completely revolutionized that post-war area era of, you know what, what's my first car going to be? Is mm -hmm. it going to be this big Land Cruiser? But no, it's going to be a sporty car that's going to take what a basic chassis would be and just completely convince people this is what you want. And it sold millions. <laughs> millions. 22,000 on the first day. It's right incredible. when they announced it at the World's Fair in 1964. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's, it's a piece of culture. I mean, really a piece of culture. And it just goes to show how much... People in the United States love the Mustang because it is the only one of its class, even if you consider pony and muscle cars, yeah. that has been built continuously since its inception. Yeah, and the last one standing now. Yep, exactly, exactly, last one standing now. Did you know? <laughs> Here he comes with his <laughs> trivia. <laughs> Some of the other names were thought of when they were going to come up with the Mustang. Let's hear them. Panther, <laughs> Torino. Oh, and Cougar. Look at that. Yeah. So those were three other names that they really, really wanted to yeah. choose, but they end up going with Mustang. And I mean, obviously looking at the result, good call. Yeah. I mean, the brand is so important that Ford decided if I'm launching an important EV, I'm going to name it after a Mustang <laughs> as well. Because it's uh, such a powerful name. That is, it's very such powerful brand recognition. Yeah. So, it does. It does. Yeah. I mean, definitely belongs on the Mount Rushmore for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. I guess I have to skip to my last one. And someone keeps choosing all of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, last time I'm out Rushmore is probably going to be a huge surprise to everybody who's watched our podcast. The Porsche 911. Ooh, good pick. Like the Mustang, it is just such an important piece of culture, but both culture and motorsport. It's been, you know, in film, literature, obviously racing ever since its inception. And it's been done with the engine in the wrong place this entire time. <laughs> Stick to it. <laughs> Don't turn around. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they, they have really just invested in this. And they've made one of the most important, desirable, and legendary sports cars of all time. I mean, it's just that part of the automotive landscape. You go to Europe. You go to North America. You go to a, any other um, foreign country. Everybody knows what the 911 is. Yeah. It's got that classic shape. Absolutely. It's, it, it, I, I love when a company can take an idea and just slowly make improvements on it year after year after year. I mean, like, it speaks to the fact that that layout, although initially criticized, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, and rightly so. I mean, it, it was very different from, from what you would expect from a, super, uh, a sports car and arguably now a supercar. Yes. Uh, considering its performance. But they were able to make it work and it for decades. Yes, right? decades. I mean, sticking to your guns, which is really an awesome... And it gives you that idea. performance with front and back seats. I yeah. mean, that's just the, the coolest I mean, thing. back seats. <laughs> My wife has ridden in the back of a 911 convertible. <laughs> I'm sure she loves that experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was the most comfortable, but she did it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just one of, those, one of those pieces of culture, and I think it's just really, really cool. And the other thing I that agree. I love about I it is... Every single 911 looks like a 911. Mm. Mm. That's true. You know, I Instantly struggled. Right I really right. struggled putting, you know, trying to put the Corvette on here as well because I love the Corvette too. But the Corvette doesn't have as clear a lineage. Mm. And the Corvette also, the Porsche also, like the Mustang, has been built continuously. That's true. That um, true. You know, yeah. Corvette took one year off in 1983. <laughs> um, but, you know, this doesn't have, you know, a Corvette today that looks nothing like yeah. the 53. That is true. But today's 911. Looks a little bit like the one in 63. It does. A little bit wider, a little bit longer. I mean, Not uh, with all things. A lot but, fatter, but, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> the, the, same, yeah. the same basic style is yeah, there. That's true. Very recognizable. But also able to offer a lot of diversity in its lineup, that's too. That's right. Which is really cool. Yeah, we've talked on that Absolutely. many times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great pick. Well, <laughs> well I'm going to stick in the sports car category and go with the car that you wanted to put on, apparently, but didn't want to. And that's the Chevy Corvette. <laughs> 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 Which, totally understandable, it has definitely changed over its time, as we see now, a mid-engine right. supercar competitor, right? Um, but I think what really makes the Corvette unique and has made an impact on uh, the automotive landscape is its ability to bring that level of performance, that Porsche level of performance, down to a price point where a lot of Americans can afford it, and a lot of folks worldwide, in theory, um, how they sell more overseas. <laughs> but... Um, 
I mean, it just speaks to the volumes, speaks volumes about the capabilities, right, that can come out of American manufacturers mm -hmm. when they really try. I mean, the Corvette has its own team, and you could tell they sweat the details, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so even though it definitely looks different than when it first started, I think its core idea is still the same in that we're bringing style and performance to folks across the country, right, in a, in a place that they can afford it. So, and, you know, to your point about performance, um, it, I, I recall one of the times I was at a uh, track day up at Virginia International Raceway with uh, for Sellers Region PCA. Mm -hmm. So this is a PCA event, right? And we're in the drivers' meeting, and you know, someone brings up something about the Corvette, and you hear all the chuckles in the back. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, 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 you know, the, the, the elitist of course, Porsche owners. Of course. <laughs> and the, guy, the, the chief instructor said, "Guys, he's like, don't laugh." He's like, ever since the C5, they've been passing us. Wow. <laughs> just, I mean, because yeah. of the Corvette offers that level of performance. Yep. I mean, it has just been an incredible performance bargain for years. I mean, thinking back, there was a, there was a racing series that had the 944 go against the C4. Mm -hmm. C4 won 29 to 0. That's insane. <laughs> so what did they do? They outlawed it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can't compete, right? <laughs> nope. Change the so, rules. <laughs> again, you know, I mean, the Corvette's a fantastic choice. I struggled very hard sure. trying to decide to put it up there or not. Yeah. But with only four slots, hey, I something you. I had to give. Well, there you go. I got it for you. Thank you. <laughs> Since you have no cars left. <laughs> So somebody steals all of mine. Barely. <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll go into my last pick. All right. I guess. All right. Uh, and uh, this time, we're not going to stick on the track. Oh. Yeah. Um, we're going to go off-road. And this is the Jeep Wrangler. Yep. I think um, the Wrangler really uh, embodies uh, American qualities. Uh, but also, you know, you think back to how the Wrangler started, right, as a necessity for war. Mm -hmm. um, and all these... Uh, soldiers coming back from war loved their jeeps so much we made it a household item now i mean everybody's got a wrangler yep. uh, you, you see them everywhere uh they come in many styles now has a pickup version <laughs> has an electric <laughs> version yeah right so um it, it really it's it's a desired vehicle and it brings a lot of potential off-road performance to folks again at an affordable relatively um uh, price point it's increasingly uh more expensive nowadays but when you compare its capabilities with stuff that is offered from other manufacturers i mean you're looking at cars that are double the cost absolutely right for yeah. its capabilities so i mean the wrangler is is a great choice also i had it on my honorable mention list ah, nice. okay. um just because of again the cultural impact it had on yeah. people in the country and just thinking back to the day of the willies right so i mean it's just it was an instrument of war Service members loved it, mm -hmm. and so they're like, oh, let's go ahead and build this. We'll build a CJ7, and then, you know, go through all the different versions of the Wrangler since then. And it's just been just a, a piece of culture. It's, you know, something that is thought of equally as being like a beach vehicle, a mountain vehicle, right. an overlanding vehicle, and it just fits all these niches yep. so, so mm -hmm. well. And so the only thing that is bad about the Jeep is the angry Jeep face. Yeah, don't do that, guys. Yeah. We, we're not fans. Yeah. But, I mean, what other car can you purchase where you could take the doors off and take and customize it to the way that you can with the Wrangler. I mean, the Bronco can copy that, right? But yeah. it just does not have the the longevity that the Wrangler brand has yet. No, right? exactly, because, so. I mean, Ford decided to stop producing that right. for, what, 30 years? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is unfortunate, because, I mean, it really could have been cool if they yeah, had been making sure. a Wrangler competitor all that time, but they chose not to. Yeah. So, I mean, props to Jeep for keeping that brand strong. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the Wrangler is definitely an iconic vehicle for the United States uh, and is a representative of of some of the ideals that we hold as a country, right? So Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thanks for joining us on The Driver's Line. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing.